we are very happy to welcome you all here today on, in this new building, in our new beautiful building, as we think, on a special occasion. Um, with this little symposium today, we would like to celebrate with you the scientific inauguration of our Forschungs and Technology Center for Physik, or FTD, as we call it in short, of the University of Bonn. It's a great pleasure for us to welcome the rector of the University of Bonn, Professor Michael Roch, as well as the dean of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, Professor Walter Wittke. It's very nice that you're here today. It's also a big honor for us um, to have here representatives of the large laboratories in Europe and in Germany that we are collaborating with here at the FTD. So a very warm welcome to Professor Paolo Pugolino, as a scientific managing director of the GSI Affair. Um, Professor Beate Heinemann, the director in charge of particle physics at DESI. And Professor Joachim Nich, the director of research and computing concern. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure to have you here and also thank you for later on saying a few words of me. The idea of, of our building, the FTD, has been to create a common space for excellent detector R&D and bring together all the groups that work in Bonn here on detectors, mostly from two institutes, from the Physikalisches Institute and from the Helmholtz Institute für Strahlen und Kernphysik. And the idea is to use this excellent infrastructure that we have here jointly and also make use of the knowledge and expertise in different, in a wide spectrum of different detector te technologies that we have here in Bonn. The construction of the FTD, as you can probably imagine, has been quite a bit of an adventure, as I guess is always the case if you construct a big high-tech research building. Um, we have a slide here that kind of gives the timeline of the construction of the FTD. It all started as, as usual with submitting a proposal. Yeah, so that's what we did at the end of 2011. We submitted a proposal in the program Research Buildings, a program that is co-funded by the federal government and the states, um, and that is meant to build up excellent research infrastructures at the universities. The construction really started here around 2014 with the demolition of the building that was here before. And there's some milestones here that we're showing in pictures from the excavation, the underground work, to the foundation stone ceremony in 2016, the interior work. 2018, we closed the envelope of the building. And then there was quite some time that we needed to install the clean room and all the technical infrastructure. And then to the handover um, of the building to the university in the middle of 2021. So the construction phase was 6.5 years. As you see here in this small picture, we already had an inauguration. That was an inauguration on the 8th of November 2021 with the State Minister of Culture and Science, but that was during Corona times. Yeah? So we had to keep it limited. We couldn't invite everyone that we wanted to have here, our colleagues and friends. And this is why we decided to have a separate, as we call it, scientific inauguration, or we rather call it a housewarming party together with our colleagues and friends. And this is exactly what we're here for today. Yeah, speaking of science, um, it was put very nicely by, by this famous mathematician and uh, theoretical physicist, Freeman Dyson, that very often breakthroughs of, and new discoveries in, in basic science are preceded by the development of new tools or of new technologies, okay? Uh, so he says that the, the effect of a tool-driven revolution is to discover new things that have to be explained, I think. Uh, that is very nice. And um, I collected here a few examples. This is by no means exhaustive, but examples that are relevant for the work um, we're doing here of, of developments. And I highlighted three of the, the, the names which are, of course, intimately uh, uh, related to the University of Bonn and in particular to the, uh, to the physics uh, here. So it started uh, with Julius Plücke, who, who was a mathematician and a physicist, and, and he worked on um, glass tubes that were filled with gas, and there was a person here at the Physics Institute who was the world expert in, in glass blowing, and, and this, his name was Geisler, and basically they discovered that when you apply a high voltage to these tubes, you can, you can ignite a discharge in, in the gas, 
and the color of the discharge is, depends on the, on the gas. Okay, so in a way, this laid the foundations for the spectral analysis of atoms and, in the end, the discovery of atoms. Okay, uh, and then, of course, uh, second name, Heinrich Hertz, uh, who is best known for his work on electromagnetic waves, but what he did in Bonn, he also experimented with so-called cathode ray uh, tubes, and he found out that in evacuated tubes, also applying high voltages, then particles are coming out from the cathode, and, and this later on then was pursued by Leonard and, and ultimately led to the discovery of the electron by, by J.J. Thompson. And of course, last but not least, Wolfgang Paul, who is one of the pioneers of particle physics uh, uh, and, and started accelerators here in, in, in Bonn, uh, but, but he's best known for the invention of a, of a small device where you can see an example out in the uh, glass showcase, uh, uh, the Paul trap, and with this device, it became possible to, to store individual ions and, and, and study them. Uh, and, and this, of course, had wide-ranging applications from basic science up to, you might say, quantum computing today. So, and this was rewarded with the Nobel Prize in 1989. And incidentally, if you stay here afterwards for the, for the tour, we have, at, in the basement, we have a, a so-called nanoscribe. This is a 3D laser printer that can print very small structures. And what the people are doing there is actually laser printing a Powell trap on a micro scale, okay? So you will, you will see this thing in action if you, if you stay here. And in, in, in the spirit of these giants, it is our hope and desire that, that we, you know, continue to develop new technologies that, in the end, uh, uh, lead to, to breakthroughs in science. I forgot to highlight the names here. Um, so this is basically shows the, the, the technologies that we, that we have here at the FTD. Um, and basically it ranges from nano microstructuring, I was, I was mentioning the 3D laser printer, uh, here to micro bonding techniques where you make the connections, fine pitch structures, and to the assembly of full detector modules. We have examples uh, here of assemblies. We have a big assembly hall there where we can also assemble uh, uh, big um, modules, and, and uh, uh, with these technologies, the two main fields of, of study are, of course, semiconductor pixel detectors, hybrid monolithic uh, uh, CMOS, uh, a few examples uh, shown here, and, and micro-pattern gaseous detectors. I've put a picture of a gem here for the uh, um, experts. We also are, have groups working on calorimeters, uh, um, uh, inorganic crystals, uh, that are used for calorimeters and scintillating fibers, and you will also see some of these things on display. And, and we also have a groups working in photonics, which is a bit aside from detector physics, but in the end, the methods uh, uh, are similar, and we can actually profit from each other. There's an electron microscope that we have down in the basement, which we use regularly to invest our, our structure, investigate our structures. Um, okay, so with this short overview of the spirit of, of the building, um, I think we can, we can uh, return to our program and we will start with a couple of greeting words by our esteemed guests and I ask Professor Michael Hoch as the rector of the University of Bonn to say a few words and to start. Thank you. Thank you. Hope it's working, yeah? Can you hear me? Yeah. So a warm welcome also from my side. My name is Michael Hoch. I'm the rector of this university. I'm a biologist. Like the dean, Walter Wittke, so we're both biologists. Of course, we are a little jealous, I have to admit. This is the most modern building that we have at the university. And um, somehow, of course, it is required that way because otherwise the major questions, or at least some of the major questions in physics will not be solved. And I understood as a biologist that one key aspect of this, of course, is to, if you want to explore how the asymmetry of matter and antimatter occurred, you know, why we have only four or five percent of mat mat material here in the universe, and most of it is not basically the physical world, but it's Anti uh, it, it, it is, um, you know, this black matter and, and so on uh, um, uh, aspects. I think this is when you need detectors somehow t to uh, explore the core of how uh, matter is composed, to detect new particles, to understand why the universe is the way we have it right now. And this is part of the 
let's say, equipment, the infrastructure that is needed for these processes. And this is why we are very proud to have that at the university. It's very serious um, today, this event. You can see this um, also because my colleagues, Dingfelder and Ketzer, are, wear are wearing ties. This is, this is very unusual uh, because normally, and you can see this from the guests who I welcome very warmly, also we have no ties and I, I know that coming to the physics department I don't wear any tie, you know, <laughs> otherwise maybe, you know, uh, anyway, so, but they are wearing ties and I have to admit it's a pleasure to see them that they have to wear, to wear ties, you know, at these events, you know, a little bit. But no, of course, they are, they are also very proud, you know, of, of this building and they have worked quite a bit for this. It has been shown what the timeline is. There are many problems which they have not uh, mentioned, you know, serious problems, and they have overcome these problems. I was often passing here, left and right, when I was visiting other institutes and so, and, uh, of course, there was the pandemic, not only the construction, but also the pandemic and so. And for me also personally, it's a great pleasure to see this building alive. To see you as public, you know, people walking around here and there. The students, so it's not the first time that I'm here. We had already the opening address two years ago. The pictures were shown. But it's really it's nice to see that this has come to life, you know. And this is what I wish and the colleagues, but also the students, the postdocs, the students, that they, that they, you know, seize this opportunity that, you know, comes with this building, with the technical, let's say, possibilities that they are there to, to kind of shape the future. And in particular, contribute to the unsolved questions, some of them I mentioned before. And I think that this is just a great adventure, you know, for anyone working here. And I, I wish that this spirit basically um, is, is, you know, present in each of the people, of the persons that are, that, that are here in this institute. I'd like to thank the colleagues from abroad for coming here. Um, the physics community, at least as far as I have know, know it, is sticking together somehow quite a bit. And so people have worked with each other as PhD students, postdocs in the same lab and so, and I know this is the case for you too. So you're also not coming as representatives of other institutions, but you're coming as friends of the people who, have, who are acting here. And that is a very nice thing to do and to, 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 noti to notice. And for me, for example, one of the major aspects here, you know, uh, which I saw when, when I became the rector of the university is not that the, the physics department, which, you know, is, is excellent maybe in three directions, you know, particle physics is only one of them, right? So, you know, we're very strong in astrophysics as well, and, and we have also the people working on optics and quantum communication and so forth, you know, so there's very strong directions in the physics. It's not only that they're competing with each other, but they, that they have really a very high standard con concerning science. And I think this is really required um, to, to be at the forefront of uh, development. And I think this is represented here too. And so therefore, we are very proud as a university to have you. And um, we would like to, of course, to support every activity that um, basically also will approach us in the future. So, and. The last thing I, I'd like to say is that I'm very happy also to welcome the, the head of the University of Münster, who has also worked with you, you know, as PhD student and postdoc and so. So it even goes across the universities that we have friends here. So also my friend, if I may say, um, and uh, the head of the, the rector's uh, conference in North Rhine-Westphalia at the same time. You know, so, so therefore, thank you also for taking your time for coming. So you're very warmly welcomed also here uh, at this university and particularly in the physics department as a physicist. And therefore, I wish you 
uh, also uh, all the luck for for everything that scientifically you know you the endeavors you, that you have in mind also in the excellence initiative so we are quite active in this context and i wish you a nice meeting today thank you very much for coming okay hello um yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It's really a great pleasure for me too to, to be here for, to this opening of this impress impressive building. I was actually astonished how large it was and when I was shown how, many, how much lab space there is, it's indeed one gets jealous very easily. I <laughs> completely agree. Um, I also think, I mean, it can't really be overstated how crucial detectors have been for the development of the natural sciences, I think. I mean, Rutherford, I mean, we wouldn't know anything pretty much about our micros, any, anything below the microscopic scale. They're literally our eyes really to, to nanoscale physics to understand today, for instance, that light sources at DESI detectors are, are absolutely crucial elements to understand how molecules work, how proteins work, how, um, how, uh, how, how, how quantum materials work for sustainability for many big questions of, of science today. Detectors are absolutely um, um, crucial. And the world that I'm particularly passionate about, the femtoscopic world, if one might want to say, or even below, of course, also, um, we, we really would literally know nothing. In fact, I gave a talk at an accelerator conference in, in, in May, and I was thinking about the, the formula. We have a formula, the standard model Lagrangian. I was thinking about, well, what would we actually know if there were no accelerators? And I, I just found that it would be just a fraction of the first of the four terms, and with detectors basically the same, we literally wouldn't wouldn't know much about um, our world. And I indeed have like um, a personal connection and a dizzy connection here to this um, this lab. Like personally, actually with Bonn, I worked very closely. And um, when we were installing the pixel detector, so the Atlas pixel detector, this is a object which is about, you know, a human size, it's about the size of me, roughly speaking, but it's much more complicated. Um, <laughs> well, in different, well, okay. <laughs> That's my judgment, my judgment. It, 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 uh, other people might, uh, might differ in opinion. <laughs> um, it was around two, 2006 um, before the LHC started, and it was, we were in a rush. Bonn, and Ber I, so I was at the time in Berkeley, one of the major universities in the United States, and Bonn and Berkeley really were the strongest group, I think, at the time, also had the strong intellectual leadership. And, and, and putting that to, a, a detector together, making it work at the time. In fact, I still, when people ask me what was the most exciting thing in my scientific career, I actually have to think whether it was seeing the first cosmic ray through the pixel detector, which happened in uh, October 2008, or observing the Higgs boson, which happened in November uh, 20, uh, uh, um, 2012. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just such, I mean, uh, this detectors, building them, constructing them, and then making them work, it is such a big effort. And then actually seeing that they work and detect particles. And what is even more astonished, it still does. I mean, we installed it in 2006, now we're in 2023, and the detector <coughs> is still working. I mean, I actually sometimes say that it's not much better than sending it into space, because we can't touch it then either. We build it, and then it has to last for, for decades, I mean, more than a decade, okay. Now, it, it, it at some point is allowed to retire in like three years or something, but it will have really uh, accomplished a lot. Um, now, on the um, DESI side, I mean, DESI being the National Laboratory for Particle Physics in Germany, um, there's also been a long-standing connection. Actually, very recently, we collaborated with Bonn here on DepFed. These are super thin, super delicate uh, pixel detectors, and, and actually, we did it twice for the PXD1, PXD2, which is now being installed this year, and we very much hope that this indeed will help us reveal the puzzle why, why the matter is left and where all the antimatter has, has gone, if uh, hopefully, maybe next year or in the, in the coming decade. Um, but there's also uh, strong histories, for instance, on the Zeus detector already, and I understand with scintillating fiber, uh, no, uh, with straw tube uh, trackers, and I understand these straw tubes, they're still used today, in fact, for um, or should also um, getting school kids excited about particle detection. I think there is, they're used 
to, to, to detect cosmic rays and then to measure uh, the muon lifetime, which is a very nice experiment that people to get people, the young generation, excited about detectors, which, which I think is absolutely um, crucial. So I wish you, I mean, really a very successful, I actually have no doubt that this is going to be a very successful and very thriving center and, and, and for detector physics. And yes, good luck. And thanks again for inviting me today. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. I've heard about the FTD uh, many times already, years ago, from my colleagues here. But it's for me the first time that I actually see it. And I'm uh, equally Im impressed uh, by this uh, infrastructure that you have uh, built up here. Great. Now, Bonn uh, University of Physics is a very, very strong partner of uh, CERN with a big engagement in our uh, experiments, in our scientific program. I think ATLAS is uh, probably the most significant uh, part of it. And there were a, a lot of very key contribution. The pixel detector, Beate mentioned uh, this uh, already. And then there are a lot of uh, also contributions to the data analysis and the, the, the physics ex uh, exploitation. So Bonn uh, has been a leading partner in the pixel uh, detector. And it's also now in the upgrade of Atlas, because the detector will have to retire in a couple of years, indeed. But also in the upgrade, uh, Bonn uh, is playing a leading role. It's a technology extremely challenging project. It has to stand about 10 times the collision rate than starting in, in 29 without losing the precision of the detector as compared to the previous one. So as a research director of CERN, of course, I cannot miss any occasion to remind my colleagues how important it is to have this detector and all the others that I need an upgrade finished uh, on time. But seeing, <laughs> seeing uh, this uh, FTD here, I have no doubt that at least what concerns Bonn there uh, will be a very good uh, news. Bonn is also uh, participating in other projects at the LHC, but also non-LHC experiment. I have seen a poster on the mighty tracker for the LHCB upgrade that we are planning actually in 10 years from now, but the preparation work is starting already. And I hope that also this center that Bonn, the Physics Institute here in Bonn, will play an important uh, role. At least you have a probably unique infrastructure in, in doing that. Now, one aspect which uh, is particularly dear to me is the education of the young, young generation in detector science. Uh, because the generation that build the big detectors that are now operating now is getting close to retirement. I saw Norbert Vermes, uh, who probably will agree on that, <laughs> right? And I, I sometimes hear also concerns expressed to me that uh, where are the young people that can carry forward uh, this uh, field and also in the future? And we all agree that this is uh, very important. There is a, a lack of a qualified physicists, engineers, but also technicians. Now, I think, and it's good that I have the occasion to speak to two university presidents at the same time today. I think this is an, a, a challenge where both universities and laboratories like CERN and, and, and others have to work uh, together. It demands a very excellent education of young people, but it also requires challenging new projects for them that inspire the next generation of detector physicists. And uh, I mentioned the upgrades that we have at CERN now, also the one that are reaching more into the future on a 10 years time scale. And I think uh, this is also true for many other uh, research uh, laboratories here. 
What I also think is, is important is, is the recognition of this work of these uh, young people. I also often hear from young people working in the field that I mean, they feel a bit set back as compared to their peers that are doing more like uh, analysis work or uh, exciting data analysis, HIC searches or, or other things. But I think that uh, it's again uh, a common challenge for universities and the big research lab that we acknowledge also excellent scientific, excellent technology work in this area. And again, I think with this uh, infrastructure, you have uh, you are in a very good uh, position. I think that is the prerequisite that we'll also be able in future to have exciting and very innovative new experiments. And beyond the basic research that we are doing, that we are doing at CERN and in other research labs, I think detector physics, the innovations that we do in detectors, are the examples for the, uh, the way that uh, that fundamental research like particle physics is also contributing to society. I think for particle physics at least, most of that what we are doing beyond fundamental research is based on detector technology, medical uh, applications to just put uh, one example. So let me stop here, congratulate you again to this fantastic uh, new building infrastructure here. And uh, I think you are in a really excellent position also to master the challenges of the future. Thanks a lot for your time. So it's a great pleasure to be here to, with lots of friends. As it was said at the beginning, uh, this uh, is a first and foremost uh, a get-together of friends uh, that uh, have worked together along many, many years. Yeah, uh, you know, projects, I, I'm looking at the rector, <laughs> projects in physics take a long time. And uh, the more the time passes, the longer they take. And uh, they uh, take, so you manage to get a lot of friends along the way that you work together with for 10, 15, 20 years to develop something. And, but um, specifically, the detector developments are a place where you really make friends because it's also a place where you uh, have a lot of interchange between different areas. I mean, you have your experiment, someone else has its own experiment, and then you find that uh, indeed that there are developments that you could use together and uh, you go to the next lab and back and so forth. And that's what I have been doing all my life. I mean, uh, I, I, I am personally a detector scientist and I, mm, that's what I've done most of my career until I became too old and then I started to do administration instead of doing real science. But for me, real science meant building detectors in particular, building silicon detectors or what I was doing. And that I always sort of had that in mind when talking to people and explaining what was the difference between the work of a physicist and of most other fields uh, is that the physicist typically builds the instruments that he's using. In most, in most other areas, there are some engineers which build, or even companies which build the, uh, the instruments. In general, physicists build them themselves. For good or worse, <laughs> it's not always an advantage. But it is the way it is. I mean, the people build them themselves together with their students. And there, I, I really think it's an, touch an important point. It is a fantastic educational opportunity. Uh, because there is a lot of physics in the conception and the development and the understanding of a detector, and that is done at home. I mean, our projects at DAISY, at CERN, at, at FAIR, are a beautiful example of uh, the, a word which American politicians like, which is global. Because it's global, it's everywhere in the world, and then it's very local in, in the home institutions, in the universities, where the students have the possibility of learning a method, learning a, 
the technologies of learning the concepts, typically conceiving and building the detectors that then will be put together to do the big physics with the, the, the one that gets the, the, the Nobel Prizes somewhere in the big laboratories. But that's work that is done at home and is a fantastic educational opportunity. I mean, this is where the young people really put their hands on things and learn the, the fundamentals of, of science. And uh, I, I, this, this is something that also uh, I, I've seen, again, personally, we, was with friends, we were organizing what were called the uh, instrumentation schools of ICFAD for many years, that were uh, things in which we would just pack actual everyday work of our laboratories, so they were not built for students. They were built, they were things that people were doing, and bring them to a third world country and have for two weeks uh, hands-on work. Uh, and this was fantastic uh, to see the enthusiasm of people of really doing real work with real detectors, uh, state of the art. You would take whatever you had on the table in that period and bring it over uh, with some issues here and there, <laughs> but uh, so building detectors is a great educational opportunity, is a great opportunity for applications. Again, it was already mentioned, but I, I really think uh, it's important to see how physics has been feeding for, in particular into medicine for diagnostics and for therapy, mostly through the fact of developing Detectors that have been used for imaging, that's been used for diagnostics, that been used then also as a, the companion of treatment. We will have a presentation later. This this is really a place where, from the X-ray uh, the development all along, has accompanied the the development of physics, but also has been feeding breakthroughs in other fields of science, like in space science, I, I mean, uh, uh, detectors uh, and uh, their services, which are developed in our labs for our experiments, then fly on satellites. The latest example is the electronics of, the, of CBM, which was uh, for, it's an experiment at FAIR, which is now flying on the latest satellite, which is going to Jupiter of ESA, and that, there's the electronics of, of CBM on that. And, and it's been true all along with uh, detectors which were developed in, uh, in uh, uh, our experiments at, at, uh, at CERN and the other laboratories <coughs> to uh, end up in other areas. And so in the overall observation of the universe, we have this very important role uh, of uh, uh, nuclear and particle physics, which develop the technologies, and then they are used in a number of other, of other areas in a general cross-fertilization. This has been uh, always uh, accompanying the, the uh, development of, of fundamental physics, and I look forward to the coming years. This is a live, continuous process, and the fact of having a center like this can have really a major role in Germany and in Europe in general to foster further ideas and, and a role not only of the scientists here, but overall of, uh, uh, of German high energy physics and nuclear physics in in, exper in the experiments and the, the, the laboratories which we represent. With this, I finish with one wish uh, that uh, we really uh, see uh, uh, this having a big role in, in the future. We are now constructing a, a, a big new facility in Darmstadt. Uh, there is, as you know very well, uh, a, already a, a strong tie with, with Bonn, um, which is one of the universities which are in this network, uh, uh, NRV Fair. Uh, and, uh, Specifically, through the development of the next generation of detectors, we really look forward to receive a lot uh, from our friends here that uh, hopefully remain our friends <laughs> all along. All along. Uh, and uh, so thank you. I couldn't miss being here to, for the launch of this. I, I, I specifically came back from holiday. <laughs> so thank you so much.
So we would like to thank you very much, all of you, for these very nice opening addresses and especially the warm words and wishes that we all appreciate very much. Thank you.